Hi, gang. Good to be with you. Pastor Steve. Today is Monday, the 22nd of August. And funny thing, this is the second time that I'm recording this particular devotion. The first time it didn't record for some reason, or I lost it, or most likely it was human error, namely mine. <laughs> I probably didn't push record or whatever. Anyway, uh, that's good news because what I'm talking about today is um, corporate worship, and it's a, it's a bit of a sensitive subject as we talk together about it, because corporate worship since COVID, at least when it comes to being together face-to-face, -face, not only in our congregation, in our church, but Na nationwide, in fact, uh, churchwide, I would say worldwide in the church, capital C, uh, there's been a decline in in-person attendance. So I want to say up front, however, when it comes to the discipline of corporate worship, that we're doing, many of us, the best that we can do. Uh, many have extenuating health concerns and COVID is still around. Uh, many are shut in with or without COVID. It's just impossible to get out. Uh, many of you don't even live in the area to be able to come and worship in person together. So please, for those of you who are in those circumstances, um, know that um, you're in good space with us and with the Lord. And... To those who have just gotten out of the habit of corporate worship, I would encourage you to, to allow God to speak to you in this space. So let's go to some scriptures. In the early church, it was very clear what corporate worship included. And by corporate worship, I mean when the church got together face to face to worship the Lord their God. Now, Christianity isn't new to corporate worship. In fact, because we came out of a tradition, the Jewish tradition, we are already and were in the first century used to worshiping together. But in Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 42, we find a picture of the first century church that really teaches us about what corporate worship is. So contextually, we catch up with Peter and the disciples just after Pentecost. Jesus has died. He's been raised from the grave. He has ascended into heaven and sit, sit at and sits at the, I was going to say sitteth, as I remembered the Apostles' Creed from when I was ki a kid, but uh, he sits at the right hand of God. And so this then is what the church looked like in the first century. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe with the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. And then the rest goes on to talk about some of the specifics. But verse 47 brings to this particular um, passage, uh, some closure. They were praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily, those who were being saved. We get this picture of this early church of a group of people who are together, face to face. They're in fellowship. They're sharing in life. They're partnering in life. They're doing life together. They are praying, they're paying attention to scripture vis-a-vis -vis the apostles' teaching. They are sharing their possessions and their property. They have things in common. They are eating meals together. They're enjoying the favor of one another. And this is really the goal of corporate worship, being together. You know, when I'm here at corporate worship on Sundays, and I get to go to all three services, and it truly is a gift to be able to do so, it is such a joy just to, to see somebody else's smile. We don't even have to touch. 
you know, I, I get to hug sometimes. I get to shake hands. And in this day and age, sometimes we just wave to each other and that's okay. But seeing somebody's eyes light up when they see you or uh, when a smile comes on your face as you see another, there's no trading that. Y you don't get that when you are only able to worship online or watch on TV. And really, that's not the goal of corporate worship. Online worship has been such a gift to us, especially when we've had to do it. But that's not the habit that we want to stay in. We want to move back into the habit of being together. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Paul has uh, just talked about what we are uh, to do as those living together, uh, made alive in Christ. And then he says this, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. This analogy of the, the body of Christ, Paul uses here and in 1 Corinthians 12 uh, in particular, and reminds us that we need each other. You know, we're worshiping here at RLC with in-person worship at about half the amount of people than we had before COVID. That's 50%. We're missing half of our body. Can you imagine a body missing half of its, its members? That would be ridiculous. In fact, when it comes to life, life is not sustainable that way. And I would suggest to you that over the long run, the church of Christ, the body of Christ, is not sustainable if our body isn't meeting together. So again, no guilt, just grace, but an encouragement and maybe an admonition to consider worshiping in person, if at all possible. Verse 16. Paul says, let the message of Christ dwell among you. You see, there's something about being together that allows us to dwell with the peace of Christ, with the message of Christ together. And in so doing, we grow in our relationship with him and with each other. Apparently, in the early church in Jerusalem, there were those who were out of the habit of meeting together. So it was just a habit for them. Um, they, they didn't um, have a valid reason for not re meeting. Some of us do, very much so. But it's so easy to get out of the habit. And I think with the church, especially in America, capital C, and we're feeling it here, many of us have just gotten out of the habit of getting up and getting ready and, and getting ourselves to corporate worship. But the writer of Hebrews reminds us in chapter 10, verse uh, 24, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. Listen, friends, uh, if you're not here because you um, are concerned about uh, COVID, if you have extenuating health um, situation, uh, if you're taking care of uh, elderly and aging at-risk parents or the rest, I mean, you know, maybe you can't get out yourself because of mobility or whatever it is. Um, don't give up joining us on the internet. Don't, don't give up watching on TV. But if you're simply out of the habit, come back. <laughs> we need you. We want you. We miss you. Uh, we want to encourage one another towards love and good deeds. And we want to be meeting face to face, namely because we love you dearly. And when you're not here, our body is not complete. So sit in this space today 
corporate worship as a spiritual discipline and ask God, Lord, uh, am I being faithful in this space? Or maybe, Lord, help me to be more faithful. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for our time together. Uh, this is indeed a, a spiritual discipline, corporate worship. Lord, I pray that you would bring our body back together in a safe way, that you would help us to um, get back in the habit of meeting with each other. Lord, we pray a special blessing on those who simply cannot make it uh, to be in corporate worship. And we are grateful for the technology and the advances to be able to uh, worship together um, online and on the TV and the rest of, of the media we are able to connect by. And we are grateful for them and ask that you would give them a, a special blessing and, and a special um, presence, Lord, especially as we, um, as we get together uh, online to worship you. But Lord, uh, you, your desire is that we uh, be face to face, that we encourage one another, that we lift each other up, that we uh, spur one another on towards loving good deeds. So uh, help us, Lord, to continue the habit of corporate worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, truly miss you. I would love to see you. And uh, love you. And God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.